endodontic TT tooth and then you put a crown so that it will be reinforced. Why uh, there is a tooth structure loss? There may be caries, trauma, erosion, abrasion, attrition. Maybe there is previous restoration and there is a recurrent caries under that restoration. Or you have made the endodontic treatment and due to the removal, you know, when you are doing your endodontics, you have removed the coronal as well as the interdenticular dentine during your excess preparation and your root canal preparation. So there will be the tooth structure loss definitely there. And if there is an endodontically treated tooth, there is some specific problem with these tooth that is micro cracks in the remaining tooth structure. There may be dehydration there, maybe aesthetics uh, has been affected. There's a lot of tooth that has been destructed. There may be low shear strength. And also, uh, there's increased fractured susceptibility and that decreased translation. This is one of the factors that you have to make this uh, crown, uh, this post and core. So uh, what I told you before as well, that if there's a tear teeth and you see this is the only whole thing you have made this preparation, the anterior teeth with the minimum loss of the tooth structure cannot or can be restored. It cannot be restored with the more um, destructive procedure. You can conserve uh, this restored it conservatively with the bonded restoration only that is present in the excess opening because rest of the area you have covered with the GP points. So if you see here, post is of little or no benefit in the structurally sound anterior teeth. Placement of the dowel in such a tooth, you say only this much of the defect is there and whole of the structure is there. And when you uh, want to make the dowel preparation, you have to uh, make all the preparation here. That what happened due to this uh, excess preparation, it will more damaging rather than the benefit of it. So this is crossed. In case of extensive loss of external tooth structure, then a post is usually required for anterior teeth because the extra, extra coronal crown preparation combined with the endodontic excess preparation significantly weakens the anterior teeth. Now already you have made, uh, you have made, uh, there is a lot of tooth structure, external tooth structure, there was loss here, you have a very less amount of uh, crown present and you have made the uh, this uh, preparation uh, for endodontics and after that when you are going to make the crown preparation there is a very less amount of tooth structure so in this case you have to go for the double preparation so double in the post areas you can see there is a lot of tooth structure if it is there a very small amount of tooth structure is in when you prepared it what happens you, it is already very much destructive. There is a very less tooth structure. In this case, you have to put this amount of um, uh, post or dowel so that it will enhance the strength of the tooth. You can see here, you have to prepare all these things. If there is a core buildup, then you will make the preparations here and then you will make the crown over it. For the posterior tooth, posterior tooth must be treated differently because of their naturally divided occlusal surface. Even caries free teeth can be fractured vertically under the occlusal forces. The minimum treatment indicated for the endodontically treated molar or premolar is the placement of the cast restoration with occlusal coverage such as the MOD only. A pulpless molar with a moderately damaged clinical crown can be built up with the amalgam or composite resin core prior to the placement of the artificial crown. If there is one sound uh, cusp, the core may be retained by the cross extension of the amalgam into the pulp chamber alone or in conjunction with the pins or slots or dentine walls, amalgam pins, you can add it. If you see here, there is a molar, there is less tooth destruction, only this part is there uh, or you can say one of the cusp is there. So what you will do, you just make the core build up and small pins, you can insert these areas. That will increase the retention. A variation usually employing two dowels is used for molar that have a little or no remaining coronal tooth structure. You can use double two also, but normally we are using only one. Uh, 
these are all about the uh, indication and uh, in which cases you have to use this and uh, now uh, how can you decide about the post length that is very much important the dowel if the dowel post length or you can get dowel, dowel if the dowel is used its extension into the root must at least equal the length of the crown for optimal stress distribution and maximum retention or the dowel should be two third of the length of the root whichever is greater now you have two parts you can uh, you take the dowel length according to the length of the crown which is present or according to the length of the root if it is the length of the root there must be two third the length of the root for example if you have 15 length total two third means uh, 10 you have to prepare and five you did not prepare it uh, this gp should be there if you see it, if this is the whole length of your uh, uh, this uh, root then two third will be covered and one third should be left a minimum length of 4 mm of gp and more if possible should remain at the apex to prevent dislodgement and subsequent leakage in this area at least if you didn't know all these thing at least 4 or 5 mm you have to leave there anything you can uh, take this for your reference about the length the longer the dowel the greater will be the retention but it is not like this that you can remove or you can put the post hole because if you post put the post hole of the length there will be the micro leakage there 